defensive end of the court. State Farm talked to an agent today at 1-800-STATE-FARM. Our starting lineups brought to you by Continental Tire. And as you mentioned, a veteran-laden group for San Diego. Four seniors in that starting lineup. For Drake, they have just one returner. That's McGlynn. The rest are all transfers. FS1 College Hoops is sponsored by Center against Isaiah Pinheiro. And too legit to quit is playing here <laughs> at the Orleans Arena. I wish you could have caught me like before we came on. I was doing my best impression of the hammer dance. Actually, I'm kind of winded right now. Wear the baggy pants. Yeah, well, I gave those up. You know, slim fit now, slim fit. Drake wins the tip. The point guard for Drake is Nick Norton. A grad transfer out of UAB on the block, Tramel Murphy going up against Pinheiro with the left. Too strong, good defense by Pinheiro. And coming down is Alex Floresca for the rebound. And here is the Utah transfer, Isaiah Wright, who runs the point for the Toreros. Yeah, if you haven't seen San Diego play, just keep your eye on the offensive movement, the excellent pass, and the patience on the offensive end allows them to get highly efficient shots. Top of the key, Floresca. Shot clock at eight, Pinheiro. Olin Carter, shot clock now at five. Step back for three, that back rim. And fighting for the rebound is Brady Ellickson. The trailer, Wilkins for three. That doesn't fall. And we're going to have a foul called against Nick McGlynn. And that's one of the guys in this game who they can ill afford to get in the foul trouble. Sam Scholl in his first year as the head coach for San Diego, a guy who looks at his team and knows the kind of expectations they have for this group. With those four seniors, all leaders in different ways. Here is Wright to the hoop, and he's able to put it in, and you can see the senior going at McGlynn trying to pick up that second foul and, and early. It goes back to your point about McGlynn picking up that early foul, a cheap one. Now, he really couldn't contest on that last layup. I mean, because he didn't want to pick up a foul on Carter and be and have two and have to sit out the game early. McGlynn had 15 first half points in last night's game against New Mexico State and a wild shot thrown up by Tramel Murphy. Isaiah Wright, the pull up for three. Got it. Isaiah Wright, who had an off game last night, two of eight from three point land and nearly a turnover here. As Olin Carter III tried jumping that. Darren DeVries in his first year as a head coach. Nine and two, best start since that 07-08 team under Keno Davis that went to the NCAA tournament for Drake. And this team is really a whole new team for the Bulldogs, returning only two letter winners from last year's team. Five-nothing deficit early on. Norton for three. He's got it. He's a guy who can shoot and carry a team when he gets hot. Well, I think it's important, too, that, you know, in yesterday's game, Nick kind of laid back a little bit, allowed things to happen. I think he may have to push the situation, look for his offense a little earlier in this game because Drake is going to need some firepower. Right with the miss. Ellingson with the rebound. Here comes Norton. Ellingson also a shooter. Here's Norton for three. That's off the lock, off the mark as Olin Carter goes up high for the rebound. 5-3 San Diego leading here early on. We haven't seen Pinheiro, the team's leading scorer yet, with a shot attempt. Here is Pinheiro now in the corner, goes baseline. There's a first shot attempt and a make. He's coming off a career-high 30 points last night. And one thing you'll notice about San Diego, the spacing, just like Drake is... Excellent. That allows Pinero right there on that you see him pick up a foul. On that last drive to be able to have enough room to clear the baseline and finish at the opposite end without really any pressure from the opposing defense. That's because the spacing is excellent. Pinero is a very, very versatile player. He's listed at six foot seven. He looks even bigger than that. A strong guy. 7-3 San Diego leading here early on. Norton. Wilkins finding Norton. Nice extra pass to Murphy. Goes to the reverse and puts it in. Beautiful touch pass in there, but also, again, the spacing allowed Murphy to be able to catch and finish. Again, both teams very skilled at passing the basketball. 
So the guy they call Squirrel has checked in for San Diego. The rebound by Williams, and it's thrown into the hands of Tremel Murphy. Here comes DJ Wilkins. Murphy with a full head of speed, able to come to a jump stop, now wrestles for the rebound, puts it up, he gets fouled, and he will go to the free throw line for two. That foul is gonna be called against Olin Carter the third. And Tramel Murphy coming off 14 points, five rebounds, and two blocks last night. We'll head to the free throw line. And I'll tell you how mental this game is. Murphy trying to figure out, Tramel trying to figure out his way. A great game last night. Now in his mind, he feels more aggressive, more assertive. You can see it early in this game, but that just comes from the confidence you get by seeing the ball go in the basket and playing well. Murphy missed the first three throw. And now McGlynn goes out. And to replace him is Liam Robbins. Robbins picked up quick fouls in last night's game. Tramel Murphy, a 54% free throw shooter, so this should go in. It does. And with that, he'll go out. And coming in to replace him is Garrett Sturtz. Excuse me, actually, he'll stay in. Ellingson will go out. Also checking in is Noah Thomas. This is an unforced turnover by the Toreros, and that's uncharacteristic for San Diego. It is. We saw a little bit of that in the late game situation last night mm -hmm. where they kind of just got out of sync of sorts in their offense, but they quickly gathered back in. And it, it happens even with a you know, skilled team and a polished team like San Diego where you do make those mistakes, but luckily it wasn't a live ball turnover. Thomas gets the pick. Murphy into the paint, the spin move hanging high off the glass. And this will come down into the hands of Olin Carter. Jermel Murphy's been aggressive, but maybe a bit out of control early on. Carter will dribble it back out, looking for Squirrel. Masowski is his actual name, Yawin Masowski, but they all call him Squirrel. Here is Masowski, good position, gets it blocked by Liam Robbins. That time Squirrel didn't really have any balance on the catch. Robbins, eas Robbins easily able to block that shot. Noah Thomas, a little hesitation. Picks up the dribble, looking for a release. He gets it to Robin. shot clock at 10. Sturts, he now gets it blocked by Masowski, but that's going to be a foul against Masowski, and that will lead us to a break. Going to the free throw line will be Garrett Sturts. When we come back, San Diego leads by one here early on. Two points in just two and two. We're allowing over 70, so 70 is a match number for San Diego. Stingy D. Especially on the defensive end to get steals, get out in transition. For 16 turnovers last night, they're able to convert that to 23 points. That's a huge boost to your offense when you're able to do that. At the free throw line is Garrett Sturtz, who missed the first. Makes the second. Garrett Sturtz led the state of Iowa in scoring last year at just under 35 points per game, 34.7. And he ties this game up at seven. And keep in mind, he missed his first three games because he was redshirted, but they, he had that removed. And you can tell that he has a lot of pop to his step. He's a really confident player at such a young age. That comes from putting in baskets in the state of Iowa. Right. Patiently able to find Masowski. That is a good play executed right there by San Diego. Yeah, he's, he mentioned at the, at the outset, too, right? Probably didn't shoot the ball great last night, but he controlled the tempo, had five assists. And you see the playmaking ability and the patience in that last play, which is why you know, you're able to benefit from that. And now a foul away from the ball. This will go against San Diego, and it's going against Olin Carter. Well, middle pick and roll, right drags out the defense, allows the two dribbles. So now Squirrel's able to dart inside. See, that dribble, that hesitation, now the pass is there. On time, on target, Squirrel able to lay it up for an easy two. That last foul on Olin Carter was his second, so he has to go out. Joey Calcaterra comes in for him. Noah Thomas, he'll play the point here, which moves Norton off the ball and allows him to be more of a scoring threat. 
Robbins looking for him, throws it away, taken away by Calcaterra. And Calcaterra now runs into his own player, and San Diego is fortunate to keep possession. Right, the step back for three, no, and the rebound by Sturtz. Sturtz will look to push. This is Anthony Murphy, the twin brother of Tramel Murphy. Anthony wears four, Tramel wears two. Sturtz, skip past the corner. Noah Thomas, three, rattles around. And this is going to be a foul called against Liam Robbins going over the back. Yeah, a tough call, but you love his aggressive trying to go after the offensive rebound. That time just had a little bit too much contact. He picked up the foul. It's the second team foul against Drake. And Drake was unable to get a couple of subs in that they wanted to get in. And McGlynn and Wilkins. Right. Kick out to the corner. Pinheiro all the way to the hoop. Got it and the foul. The foul is called against Anthony Murphy. That's his first. Well, the patience here. Pump fake. Poor closeout. And then the ability to sidestep Robbins, not pick up a charge, but then take the contact and finish. See, the thing about Pinero is this. When you're the leading scorer, you'll get a lot of touches. You don't have to force your offense because eventually it's going to come back around to you. And then when you play with a squad that is unselfish and can set you up, it makes your job a lot easier to be efficient, especially in late-game situations because you don't wear yourself out trying to score the basketball early in the game. And he was efficient last night, 11 of 16 for those 30 points, as San Diego has gone up by five. Murphy, good pass from McGlynn for the dunk. That was excellent, excellent execution on the press break. And pass over the press, and then you attack when you have the advantage. Well executed, and now you get another steal. Here's Sturtz with the interception. He's got a trailer if he wants it. He'll take it himself and finish with a left to make it a one-point game. Well, and Sturtz looking back at his trailing, I think it was Tamil Murphy, or it might have been Antonio, I mean Anthony, that froze Pinero, and he really couldn't go after the block. Wilkins against Wright. Wright pulls up for three, in and out, and the rebound by McGlynn. Here comes Noah Thomas. Thomas, the crossover. McGlynn, pump fake, had his men, nearly drew the foul against him. Now McGlynn on the block against Floresco. Backing him down, faces a double. The three is long by Wilkins, and here comes Isaiah Wright. Leading by one. Wright with the hesitation, kick out to the corner. Calcaterra's three is good. And see, that's just experience. Wright that time probed the defense, sunk everybody in, and at the right time, able to kick it up to Calcaterra for a perfect dime and three-point shot. Calcaterra had five points off the bench in eight minutes last night. DJ Wilkins in the corner, guarded by Tyler Williams. Wilkins in the paint, the jump stop, and he puts it in. DJ Wilkins can score. He had nine last night, averages over 10 and a half per game. That double double figure score in the six of 11 games this year. The last three averaging 12.7, so he can put the ball in the basket. Nice job right there by Noah Thomas, knocking that one off the leg of Isaiah Wright, and it will be Drake basketball when we come back. And here is Wilkins, the scorer, able to score in the paint. And there, you have Michigan that's kind of been stuck a little bit. They're undefeated. Nevada pushes up, even though Duke has one loss. I, I can see them pushing up to the number one spot. But I'll tell you what, I think this is just a microcosm of what's going on in college basketball. Not really a dominant team. And that AP is going to be shaking up every week, mm -hmm. I, I do believe. Tremel Murphy is back in the game here for Drake. Here's Norton. Shot clock at 10. Ellingson. McGlynn. Little jump hook. Gets the roll. Nick McGlynn had 19 points, 7 rebounds, 3 blocks last night. And he ties the game up at 15. And if McGlynn is able to catch that cleanly and get 2 dribbles and get his body into the paint, he's shown the ability with that soft touch to be able to make those jump hooks. So 
it to do a better job of weeding them out early on. And McGlynn crashes the glass to get the rebound. A chance now for Drake to take the lead. They've got a switch. Where's the mismatch? They get it to McGlynn again against Floresca. Trying to back him down. No double team comes. The lefty hook doesn't work, and the foul's going to be called against Floresca as McGlynn was going for the offensive rebound. And the initial defense is good. I mean, it's one on one. He got down in the stance. McGlynn was trying to overpower him by backing him down, and then the shot goes up, but it was on the defensive rebound where the foul when Floresca was committed. Tough situation because initiative defense was very, very good. Floresca picks up his first foul. He goes out. Andrew Ferguson, the seven foot center from Australia, comes in. DJ Wilkins, a step back jumper, no, and going up for the rebound is Isaiah Wright. And loving your guards can get in there, get inside and clean up the mess a little bit on the defensive glass. And right to the hoop will get the roll to put it in and put San Diego back up by two. Seven points for Isaiah Wright here in the first half. McGlynn looking for a three splash. He had just one last night. You mentioned he took six, and that gives Drake the lead. No hesitation. I, I like it. Right, right back the other way. Takes the lead right back. Norton, look at that crossover to the hoop, and he gets it blocked. And they save attempt by Murphy. Here comes San Diego. Vince Sullivan in, did not play in last night's game. And this will be out of bounds. It's a kickball off the leg of Tramel Trevel, uh, Murphy. He talked about McGlynn stepping back out, knocking down that three-point shot again. The excellent pick. The communication was late in regards to whether they're going to switch and help and get back. That left McGlynn open to square up his shoulders and stroke a nice-looking three-point shot. He's got seven points here in this first half. He had 15 first half points last night. Calcaterra. And he gets called for a travel. Yeah, Drag the pivot foot. Yeah, that's where you need that jump shot. You see Villanova, a school that teaches a lot jump stop, pivot, mm -hmm. pass back out. That eliminates the need to shuffle the feet and get called for a travel. Not sure if there was just a warning right there to Sam Scholl. Or somebody on the bench. It may have been somebody on the bench, too, but Scholl not happy right now. It's a one-point lead for San Diego. Coming up on 8.45 to go here in the first half. Ellingson underneath to McGlynn. McGlynn gets the foul and the bucket. Andrew Ferguson commits the foul. You think maybe that Sam Scholl put Ferguson in to try to create the height advantage, disrupt him. But that time, Ferguson was late on the weak side action, which allowed McGlynn to sneak in on the baseline. And then when you have that size, you're trying to recover, you're not under control. More than likely, when a shot goes up, McGlynn is going to institute, he's going to institute that contact and create a foul situation, which he did. Back in the game is Yawin Masalski, number 25. Pinheiro got off to a good start. His fadeaway jumper off the back of the rim. The rebound by Nick Norton. Excellent contest that time by McGlynn. Ellingson in transition off on a three. Murphy crashing the glass. Who's the foul going to be on? It's going to be against Tramiel Murphy. And over the back foul. That's the first against him. Fourth team foul against Drake. And the substitution coming in is going to be Garrett Sturts replacing DJ Wilkins. And now back into the game with two fouls is Olin Carter to replace Joey Calcaterra. Yeah, and keep an eye on that, too, because Carter has to guard Norton. Norton is very good off the ball, catching, receiving, then attacking. It's going to be interesting to see how Carter is able to play him, and try to contain him and keep him in front without picking up a cheap foul. Good job by Masowski to go up for the rebound. And now he backs down McGlynn and puts in the jump hook. Yeah, Masowski that time able to put that left shoulder right in McGlynn's chest. That created enough space to get off his jump hook. That wasn't very squirrel-like, was no, it? No, it was. He's an aggressive squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that acorn. Go get it. 
McGlynn, the handoff for Norton. His pull-up jumper, no, and the rebound for Pinheiro. All tied up at 21. Pinheiro. And a foul. Who's it going to be called against? It's against Tramel Murphy, and that's actually a benefit for Drake, because otherwise it would have been number two against McGlynn. Instead, it's number two against Murphy. But a good one here, all tied up at 21. Compared to five turnovers for San Diego. Now, those five turnovers that they've created, Drake, they've been able to convert that to eight points. Mm -hmm. so a big reason why Drake is right here in this ball game. Here's Carter, off the inbounds play out of the timeout, able to hit. And a tight curl play right there. Actually, excellent executed play coming out of timeout. And again, the attention to details when you're in the huddle, then you can come out and execute the play and get the shot you want. Those are the first two points of the game for Olin Carter, the third. Carter had 18 last night. Now it's Anthony Murphy for three. Back rims it, and Carter goes up for the rebound. Remember, Carter picked up those two quick fouls, went to the bench, and Sam Scholl, his head coach, is like, you know what, I need this guy back on the floor. Yeah, well, you can trust it. I mean, that's what you get with senior leadership, understanding how to protect yourself when you are in little foul trouble. Pinheiro uses that jab step, has some space, hits the jumper. And Pinheiro's got seven, back up to a four-point lead here for San Diego. Yeah, and Murphy that time had to respect the driving ability of Pinheiro, so he gave him a little space, and Pinheiro made him pay. Murphy now goes baseline, tries to skip it. It's going to be out of bounds off of Drake, and it will be San Diego ball. So there is the second turnover by Drake. It's a 6 nothing run for the Toreros of San Diego out of the WCC. Norton, great anticipation with the steal. Sturts up ahead for Murphy. Murphy lost his footing and somehow was able to put that ball in. Uh, once again, a lazy pass and Sturts able to deflect, get his hands and keep that momentum going in order for Drake to be able to get out on the break. And Anthony Murphy was a beneficiary of great defense. Right. Good lead for Squirrel and Squirrel puts it in. Right again, dissecting the defense, getting deep into the heart of it, then making an intelligent play. Squirrel making a living right there in the paint right now. Norton coming off the screen. McGlynn is asking for it. Hey, he's begging for it. <laughs> he's begging for it. And now a steal by Squirrel. Oh. And he puts up an air ball. Gets his rebound and now puts it in. And you could see his look on the face like, oh my <laughs> gosh, I can't believe I did that. And a timeout is taken here by Drake. You had to see the look on the face of Yawin Masalski, the guy they call Squirrel, out of Belarus. Well, this is a little squat. Wow. Where's the oxygen yeah. mask? <laughs> the dry air of Vegas yeah, is getting to me. <laughs> Sometimes you're lucky to get away with something, man. Out of the timeout by Drake. DJ Wilkins back in. They were running the offense through McGlynn. Backdoor cut by Wilkins. He was open for a minute. Shot clock at nine. Norton. Shot clock down to three. Wilkins. With the left, puts it up, draws iron. McGlynn gets the offensive rebound, goes up strong, and puts it in. He plays with such energy. He does, and he, but he puts himself in the right situation where now he's perfectly positioned to get that offensive rebound and then to put back. Well, this is a huge mismatch right now. Pinheiro in the block against Sturts. The senior against the freshman, Pinheiro working against him. Good defense by Sturge, just better offense by Pinheiro. Well, you got Pinheiro to turn to the baseline, and basically he was behind the side of the backboard. But when you're a good offensive player like Pinheiro, you can just make those type of difficult shots. McGlynn with the left. Mm. Pretty, pretty shot by Nick McGlynn. 14 now for McGlynn here in the first half. Right, the spin move. And that's a late whistle. Yeah. 
And, Very late whistle. And, you know, McGlynn actually reached in and got lucky that he didn't get called for the foul. The foul is called against D.J. Wilkins instead. But, but what a benefit it is to have a post player that you trust that you can dump it down into to make some plays. He has been awesome here in the first half. Isaiah Wright at the free throw line makes the first. Isaiah Wright already with 10 points here in the first half. Make it 11. 33-27, six-point lead for San Diego. Under four to play here in the opening half. The championship game of the Continental Tire Las Vegas Classic from Orleans Arena here in Las Vegas. He tried that little slip screen right there with McGlynn in the middle with Wilkins. Well defended that time by San Diego. McGlynn gets his man up in the air, gets it all the way to the hoop, leaves it off for Sturts. Sturts, a couple of pump fakes, and is able to maneuver around the hoop and put it in. Well, how about the patience? But McGlynn, the pump fake, he had the shot, but he gave it up to a smaller Sturts inside and was patient and able to finish on the opposite side of the rim. Wright has struggled from three-point land so far, just one of five from deep. Right, the crossover gets in the paint. The mm. floater off the glass. 13 now for Isaiah Wright. Well, KYG, know your game. You said he was struggling from the three, but what he's not struggling with is getting the ball to the basket and finishing. Well, here's a live ball turnover. Pinheiro comes up short. Tyler Williams trying to crash the glass. It's off of him, and it will be Drake basketball. And you know what? Pinheiro looked when he was attacking, and he saw Ellenson sitting right there position to try to take a charge. That's why he pulled up a little bit short for that little runner instead of going all the way to the basket. Sturts doesn't want to take the outside shot right now. The backdoor cut left wide open for Nick Norton. Trigger mechanism. The guy overplays you. You go back door. Your teammate automatically sees that trigger, releases the pass. You got an easy two inside. Joey Calcaterra is back in for Drake. Here's Pinheiro against Sturts. His pass deflected, gets it back. And we're going to have an offensive foul called against Pinheiro. Sturts, the freshman, drew the charge against the senior Pinheiro. That's number two against him. Yeah, developing the rhythm in practice is so important, but also understanding the trigger points. You overplay, bam, I'm going back door. And because of the excellent spacing, I've talked about it, now you're able to get that pass. And look at Sturts here. Pinheiro trying to overpower the smaller Sturts, and Sturts absorbs the contacts and baits him into it and takes that charge. Norton lobbing it now to McGlynn. McGlynn didn't have great position, was too close to the rim, got it blocked by the rim. Yeah, probably should have came down where it gathered himself and went right back up on the other side, tried to shoot it on the catch. Floresca, little handoff here to Finn Sullivan. Tyler Williams sees a three-point shooter. He's off right there. And a rebound for Norton. Sturts. Off the glass. Too strong. Williams gets the rebound. And a timeout will be taken now by Sam Scholl and San Diego. 1.30 to go. Four-point lead here in the first half. The timing wasn't effective. What we're seeing Drake do an excellent job now is force San Diego out of their comfort zone a little bit. That's why they're not looking as efficient or smooth as smoothly as we seen them execute last night. Here's Carter. All the way to the hoop off the beautiful pump fake is the guy they call Flo, Alex Floresca. Back up to a six-point lead. Don't forget, Carter's got two fouls. He's on the floor right now playing defense. He's got two. Pinero's got two for San Diego. Another backdoor cut. Ellingson able to put it in. Wow. Two great plays. Foresca with the pump fake out of the timeout to get isolation. And then the backdoor that time by the Bulldogs. Right for three. That's his second three of the game. And he's got 16 here in the first half. Norton the kickback. Norton. Wilkins. He gets called for steps. A turnover here. 
And the backdoor plays, they're open here so far. Well, it's tough because you want to deny the ball on the wing, but once you jump up too soon and you have an empty corner and the weak side is all spread out and you have an excellent passing team, you're susceptible to the backdoor cut. And notice what Sam Scholl has done. He brought Pinheiro back in knowing that they can essentially hold for almost a final shot. So he wants his best offensive player on the floor a chance to they could make it a 10-point game with a three and if he can get out on the perimeter but it looks like it's gonna be a little pick and roll up top or a weave action it is the weave here's right shot clock down to four right with the left too strong Pinheiro the follow and he gets fouled with one on the shot clock well, the action and the movement gave Wright the opportunity to exploit a little gap in the defense and get down the lane. And what he did, because he's been finishing so well at the basket, you know, in the first half of this game, he attracted two defenders. And those defenders, that meant somebody took a body off Pinheiro, who was able to sneak in there and pick up that foul. Pinheiro's got nine already in the first half. One of one at the free throw line. Now two of two. He's in double figures. 41-33. Finn Sullivan comes back in, as does Calcaterra. Carter goes to the bench with those two fouls. Doesn't want to pick up a third here in this first half. And you have to think that Pinheiro is going to come out, too, if he makes this. He misses. The rebound for Sturtz. Got to go. Two seconds. Sturtz puts up the three. Has it partially blocked by Calcaterra. And that's the way this first half will come to a close. So Sam Scholl's team, which was very close, not playing their best basketball, they will have an eight-point lead going into the locker room. Well, continental tire. Second half ready to go. And it will be San Diego to inbound the ball. Isaiah Wright on the floor with Tyler Williams, Alex Floresca, Olin Carter, and Isaiah Pinheiro, the starting five for the Toreros. And here is Carter, who had two quick fouls. He has this one go off his leg, and that is the eighth turnover of the game for San Diego. And that time, D.J. Wilkins smelled this played out. He, as soon as... Carter received the pass. Wilkins was right there to slap it away. Jermell Murphy loves the spin move. Had it go off of somebody. Didn't get called for a travel. Now the floater. We've got a blocking foul and one for Brady Ellingson. Floresca will be called for the foul. Yeah, well, it's interesting that Murray didn't get called for a travel. But as the ball got reversed around, Ellingson right there, a little floater was able to get up in the air and yes mm -hmm. he, he was not Floresca was not set that time to absorb that charge for Ellingson just his 10th free throw of the season he is now 8 of 10 at the line a 3 point play and that makes it a 5 point game Floresca going back door for Pinheiro Great help by Ellingson right there on the baseline. Floresca for three. Alex Floresca, he is now 7 of 13 on the season from three-point land. You leave him open, he'll take the shot. DJ yeah. Wilkins. Not a lot of ball movement right here by Drake. Ellingson waits for the pick. A little hesitation. Ellingson to Wilkins for three. Got it. DJ Wilkins, a 43% shooter from three-point land. Well, you get that shot because Wilkins, even a freshman, didn't start to inch in as Ellingson was inside. He maintained the spacing, so on the kickout, he was just able to catch and shoot. And here's Carter for three. They're trading threes now. Couple for San Diego, one for Drake. It's still an eight point lead for San Diego. McGlynn against Floresca. Norton wants it. Norton, too much hesitation, thought about maybe yeah. lobbing it up, yeah. and then he was like, oh, wait, I should go backboard, and came up short. In between that time, that's why he left it short. Floresca. 
Pump fake on the three. Trying to back down McGlynn. Good defense by McGlynn, never leaving his feet. Pinheiro loses it on the floor. There is Norton with it. And Wilkins once again able to get his hand in there, strip the ball and knock it down to create a turnover. Tramiel Murphy doesn't like shooting a three. Instead, he goes to the hoop at Pinheiro, who's got two fouls, so he's cautious. Do I want to pick up that third too early? Well, excellent decision not to bail Pinheiro off by shooting the three you talked about, but he pumped fake and put it on the deck and attacked him off the dribble. A back rim on a three attempt by Wright. The rebound for Norton. Running the floor is McGlynn trying to save it, and he turns it over to Pinheiro. Tyler Williams, the pump fake. Floresca for three again. Can't hit it this time, and the rebound for Ellingson. And that time, not the same stroke for Floresca. That time, kind of short-armed it a little bit. Didn't follow through at the end. Murphy. You know he wants to attack the hoop. He loves the spin move. There it is. <laughs> And he gets the foul number three against Pinheiro. Well, you would think if we know it that <laughs> San Diego, whoever's guarding him, would know it too because he wants to dribble, dribble, get you leaning one way and then spin back. And that's exactly what he did. This time, able to be creative on the baseline and use the opposite end, opposite side of the basket to get a shot up. Sam Scholl is arguing his case right there. But Murphy will go to the free throw line. Murphy is one for two at the line. Five points on the night. And he is short again. Again, a 54% free throw shooter. He's got that elbow brace on. He hates it. He dislocated the elbow against North Dakota State back on December 1st. I mean, I guess it is a built-in excuse if you miss a free throw. Oh, yeah. But he was, I think he was shooting that percentage before he hurt his elbow. So that, <laughs> you kind of throw that one out the window a little bit. You can't say it's my elbow. <laughs> Carter with a hesitation. Able to keep that dribble alive. Floresca. Double. Wilkins comes down a double. Here's Wright, the behind-the-back dribble, and Wright will draw the foul. And that foul will be called against Nick Norton. Yeah, and actually, that time, I thought Wright made not the smartest decision because he took it back into where the ball came from instead of going the opposite side. And that he could have had a two-on-one situation, but luckily he got bailed out by picking up a foul. And now a foul is going to be called against Tramel Murphy. And that'll be number three against Tramel Murphy. Yeah, George Tramel. Oh, say Coach DeFries, I'm okay. Keep me in. I can play with three. I don't, don't want to come out right now. Well, tramel has got three. pinero has got three. We've got a conversation at the scorer's table. Because the shot clock was reset to 30. And the shot clock, I think, should be at 20. And that's what it is. So we're good. We're all set. Clock is good to go. 47-42. San Diego leading. Kyler Williams has been quiet offensively so far for San Diego. The ball knocked out of the hands of Pinheiro. How about the defense there by Murphy? Playing with three fouls to be that aggressive? Yeah, well, he gave him enough space. Pinheiro was right here. He saw the ball being swung back in. He was able to reach his left hand in there, poke it out, which eventually went out on Pinheiro. So, took a chance, because Easy could have slapped down on the wrist and picked up number four. I guess he thought, well, maybe I'll give my twin a chance to play. Here's Murphy, good find by McGlynn. He gets blocked by the rim, gets his own miss, comes back with the left, no. And it's a rebound by Tyler Williams. Yeah, two missed opportunities that time by Murphy inside. And now they got to watch finish. out for a frustration foul. Yep. There's the jumper by Williams. That was as far in as he could be without actually going all the way in. Yeah, everything was right that time with Tyler Williams just not able to keep it down in the basket. Norton can hit the three. Carter, nice crossover. And Isaiah Wright just stepped on the sideline for a turnover. 
Brings us to a break here in the second half. A five-point lead for the Toreros here in the championship game of the Las Vegas Classic. I'm assistant coach at Creighton. And it's weird, you know, you think about, all right, I get the head coaching job. What does it mean? I got to move. Well, okay, okay I'm going to buy a house. Guess where he's living right now? Hmm. In his brother Jay's basement with his wife and two kids. His brother is living with his own family upstairs. He's downstairs. He's living at his brother's house right now. He's the head coach of the basketball team. Ellingson gets his man up in the air, draws the foul, as Finn Sullivan gets called for the foul. I mean, I just think that is awesome. Yeah, but I'm wondering how long the wife will take it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, his house is being built, and it'll finally be finished. But I think you learn a lot about who you are in the relationship you have with your family when you're living in close quarters <laughs> like that. So he's he's living there as his house gets finished, where he can move in, in the suburbs of Des Moines, Iowa. He had a great brother. Would you do that? Well, of course I would. Okay, just check it. Of course. No, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a basement, but yeah, sure. 47-49, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the score. San Diego leading. Noah Thomas is back in. Remember, he left the game earlier with an apparent injury. Obviously, he's back and feeling okay. As Wright attacks the hoop, he'll draw the foul. Let's see who this foul is on. And it's going to be against Liam Robbins. Yeah, and that time it was a miscommunication with Thomas on the baseline, and I believe it may have been either Ellingson or Norton when they didn't switch out in the corner. That left Davis short, and he had to come in and run at the last minute. Wasn't in really good position. Right, I mean, Thomas. And Thomas, so that, that caused... It, it opened up the driving lane to get inside to pick up that foul. 18 points for right. And an offensive foul is going to be called against Anthony Murphy. Was not set on the screen. He had his leg extended, and that's the reason. Watch well, his leg. Well, let's see, right? I mean, I kind of think that's a play you could... Would Raph say ticky-tack? Ticky-tack, yeah, yeah. You could have played on. And now Murphy gets on the deck. He's asking for a timeout. It doesn't matter. It's a jump ball, and Drake has a possession. Yeah, he was kind of in, in between of really being aggressive, taking that timeout. Like, should I take it or not? But he got to the ground first, and typically the guy who gets it, who gets down first will end up with the possession. So able to save the, save the timeout which is important to get down the stretch of this game because it seems like it's going to continue to be close. But you, you, you pick up the possession by that hustle. Again, with Noah Thomas in, that moves Norton off the ball. A chance for him to be more of a scorer. Thomas skipped past the corner for Norton. Robbins, not a, much of an offensive threat. Ellingson able to hit the jumper, the transfer out of Iowa. Three-point game, under 14 to play. The last time Drake won a tournament was 2013, the Fresno State Classic. The last time San Diego won a tournament, the 06-07 season as Carter drains a three. So both teams in search of a tournament championship for the first time in a long time. Yeah, San Diego does a good job of answering maybe a run from the Bulldogs. Ellingson off the feed from Liam Robbins. Yeah, that's his great ball. But that time, Ellingson, to be able to come from the opposite side, and coaches always say sprint off the pit, sprint off the trolls. Reasons why you do that, prime example, you end up getting open, and now with an excellent pass from Robbins, able to finish for an easy two. Ellingson now has 11 after having seven last night. Right posting up. Right facing a double up in the air. Nowhere to go. Nearly turns it over. Three on the shot clock. Carter step back for three. Gets iron. And the rebound by Finn Sullivan. A fresh 30. And Carter, the senior, going to reset. This is out of bounds 
off of Drake, and it will stay San Diego ball. See, I can imagine you when you play. This was you right here. Ellings Ellingson right here, curling down the lane, trying to avoid the contact because you don't like contact. Then you get inside and you finish up the layup, right? Remember how you asked me when I let my brother live with me? Uh -huh. He was one who used to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't mind contact. Okay. I'm used to it. I'm just checking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but an excellent play. And when you're a scorer you can shoot and understand how to read screens, it's a multiple ways you can score. And that right there, yep. reading the screen, getting open, underneath, out of bounds, those plays that are not in your offensive set, so to speak, but pay off huge for you. That's the second time this worked for San Diego. A nice take to the hoop and a finish by Wilkins. Seven points now for D.J. Wilkins. San Diego up by four. Drake keeping it close. Pinheiro with those three fouls. Carter had two early fouls, none since. Gets the handoff. Shot clock down to five. Right. Lob up with two on the shot clock, and Masowski puts it in. And did he bait McGlynn to come over just a little bit more in order to get that pass up to Masowski? Ellingson with the left, able to draw the foul against Joey Calcaterra. And Ellingson has been so much more aggressive in this game. But how about this setup by Wright? Squirrel. Admit, I got my guy over the top. Brady Ellingson at the free throw line. Ellingson, 11 points on 4-5 or five from the floor. 3-3 three of three at the line. A transfer from the University of Iowa. His hometown, Mamoni Falls, Wisconsin. Never been. <laughs> that makes two of us. That is beautiful, though. What do you think? It has to. It has falls in it. It falls in it. What if it, you know, what if they didn't have falls in it? Just the name. Then that's just false advertising. <laughs> a reach and foul here against Noah Thomas. He doesn't agree with the call. Neither does a Drake bench. Yeah. Aggressive. But you, here's the thing. As a young player, you want to be aggressive, but you don't want to give up those cheap fouls to get the San Diego team closer into the pillow. Mm -hmm. you, you don't you, you want to be aggressive and force them to be uncomfortable. Be smart. Masowski, the handoff here to right. Guarded by Thomas. Calcaterra back to right. Shot clock at nine. Right. Patiently. Shot clock down to three. Good defense there by McGlynn. Wilkins back the other way. He's talking. He wants the pick. Doesn't use it. Along the baseline, Ellingson for three, no. And the rebound by Pinheiro, who's been kept in check here in the second half because of foul trouble. Calcaterra has it blocked, and it will stay San Diego ball. Yeah, and that time, excellent job by Drake getting back in transition, keeping the ball in front, and take the choice. Ellington, Ellington or McGlynn right there on the block, both were in great position. So back into the game now, Tramel Murphy, Garrett Sturtz, Nick Norton all in for Drake. Down by four. Carter, his step back jumper is good. Well, he, he gets to a spot. One, he allows his post players to set the screen, which now allows him to come open clearly enough to see the shot. Then he gets to his 15-foot jump shot or step back three. Able to stroke it. Wilkins for three. Hits it off the assist by Tramel Murphy. And did you see what set up the assist for Murphy? Right. The spin move. Spin move. Three-point game. Squirrel on the high post. Tyler Williams to answer right back. That's what he can do. Yeah, big time three. I mean... At key moments of the stretch of the game last night, Tyler Williams either came up with a shot, offensive rebound, something right there. 
No bigger shot for San Diego. Almost a 46% three-point shooter. Murphy along the baseline somehow puts it up and in, and he is down. Looked like it came down on the elbow, and he is in severe pain. He dislocated the elbow back on December 1st against North Dakota State. And now he's rolling over, yeah. and oh, that's just good to see. And that's why you wear the brace. Well, yeah, you know, the higher you jump, the harder it is when you come down. This floor doesn't give, and it's, you know, not a bad play there by Squirrel. It was just off balance right here, probably anticipating a little contact and without it the body just fell like a brick to the floor and fortunately maybe just the wind got knocked out of him on the contact with the floor like right here oh and honestly you do that and he also could be scared having already dislocated the elbow yeah. you're like thinking mm -hmm. oh no not again not, not again, again. Yeah. and now his brother Tries to get the steal. We got a jump ball, possession arrow. It will stay San Diego ball. I'm going to tell you this. Drake is scrappy defensively. How many times have we seen when San Diego has driven the ball and it's been reached, it's been mm -hmm. knocked out, it's been deflected? So part of that, too, is quick hands. But you're in the right position to be there on the dribble penetration to kind of influence or take it away. They say this there the most is. athletic team that Drake has had in several years. And that one's knocked away by Tramel Murphy, who came right back in for his brother, Anthony Murphy. And Tramel has the task of guarding Isaiah Pinheiro, who averages over 20.5 points per game. He had 10 in the first half, nothing here in the second. Shot clock down to eight. Williams, he's a three-point shooter. Williams, a lob to Squirrel, and Squirrel puts it in. Second time they've gone to him off the lob with a shot clock winding down. Sturtz turns the corner. Good job using that pivot foot and able to draw the contact by Masalski. Well, this is second or third time we've seen Sturtz drive hard to the paint and be patient enough to draw the defense up and pick up a foul. And and Drake right now, and Darren DeVries is asking, why wasn't that a shooting yeah, foul? Yeah, I don't and see. And I'm, I'm in agreement. But I, he, he wasn't on the floor when he called that foul. Let's see if he comes out. Because I thought Search was going up for the shot. Right there. Oh, he called it on the floor. I still think that was in the act. He was going up in the shot. Norton, good ball fake. Skip past the corner. Sturge for three. Can't hit it. Crash in the glass. McGlynn, he puts it in. There are his first two points of the second half for Nick McGlynn. It's back to a four-point game. And the Bulldogs will not go away. And Floresta just lost sight of him that time, Justin. The foul is called here against DJ Wilkins. His second. And that is going to be... The sixth team foul against Drake. So after this, San Diego is shooting free throws the remainder of the game. As a team, San Diego shoots it at almost 74%. Carter, he's the guy they like to go to off the inbounds plays. He misses that one. McGlynn got the rebound. Sturts picked up by Williams. Murphy <laughs> does waiting <laughs> and this time Pinheiro knew what was coming he wanted to he, he hesitated <laughs> hesitated and finally kind of got to it <laughs> and Tyler Williams in transition that was pretty he's got a nice stroke See, if you run hard you get out in transition you push the ball ahead you have those opportunities to find yourself in a situation where you have a nice wide open shot. A kick save and a beauty here by Pinheiro. But Tyler Williams, the sharp shooter for San Diego, starting to heat up here in the second well, half. He was quiet early, but hit two big shots for San Diego.
7.44 to go. It will be Drake Ball underneath. The championship game of this Las Vegas Classic. Game one of two tonight here on FS1. We still have New Mexico State against Washington State. Norton able to get it back. Shot clock at 10. Underneath finds McGlynn, and McGlynn gets fouled by Floresca. That was great hustle by Nick Norton because he almost turned it over, got it back, and now they draw a foul. Well, if you're San Diego, you, you can do everything right. I mean, defensively, they got away. They tipped the ball, but it just didn't fall in their favor. And then Nick Norton able to gather, drive the baseline, and then make the proper play. Sometimes you can play great defense, and it doesn't pay off for you. But Glenn misses the first free throw. He's now one of two at the line. A 76% free throw shooter misses them both. Pinero wants it against Murphy, gives it back to Tyler Williams. Shot clock at 10. Williams got to close out on him. Williams, the floater. How about that? Eight points now for Tyler Williams. And, and Tyler Williams was calling for the ball on that. You see Norton take the shot. He knew that he could take Ellingson off the dribble. Able to finish with a nice little floater. And right there, because you can shoot the jump shot now, Ellingson has to respect that. Able to get his shoulders and feet into the in the middle of the lane and finish that soft floater up top. Nearly an offensive foul against McGlynn. Norton got his man up in the air. Open in the corner for three is Ellingson. And that's a big shot for Drake. Ellingson now with a new Drake high of 16 points. It's a six-point ball game with 6.35 to go. Yeah, what a beautiful stroke by Ellingson. Right. Skip pass. Williams has been taken over offensively. Here's Pinheiro. Shot clock at nine. That's a two. No, and the rebound is tipped out here to Norton. Here he comes. Wilkins. Ball fake. Bounce pass to Murphy. Four point ball game. San Diego wants the timeout. And the Drake fans who made the trip from Des Moines are up on their feet here in Las Vegas. And you create offense with your defense. Wilkins has about 8.6 points per game on the season, but 16 tonight because he's made himself available to be in the right place at the right time. Out of the timeout, let's see what Coach Scholl has drawn up here for his senior-laden squad. Carter, that's for three. Got it. <laughs> a senior hits a big shot. Draw it up, get it in my guy's hand, and you go make a play. 15 points for Olin Carter, who moved into the top 10 in San Diego scoring last night. <laughs> Ellingson finding Murphy on the block against Pinheiro. McGlynn to answer with three, way off the mark. And a rebound for Pinheiro, and San Diego will slow it down. Take some time off the clock right now, leading by seven. Yeah, that time McGlynn seemed like he kind of rushed out a little bit, really didn't have a rhythm, didn't really know if he wanted to shoot it. Good hedge right there by McGlynn. And this should be an offensive foul against Carter. It was, and it is. Good defense by D.J. Wilkins, the third foul against Carter. Remember, he picked up two quick ones. He played a long time with those two fouls. And how about D.J. Wilkins anticipating, sliding his feet, cutting Carter off, forcing him to extend that right arm to pick up that offensive foul. Ellingson. Little runner in the lane, too strong, and the rebound is chased down by Alex Floresca. That was one of those possessions where you kind of felt Drake needed to score. Yeah, he had the good luck that time just back of the rim by Ellingson. Not able to use that soft touch to knock down that shot. 
So now you got to come up with a stop if you're the Bulldogs of Drake. Right, hanging, puts it up, and he gets it to go. 20 points now for Isaiah Wright. Every time that Drake has made a run, this veteran-laden team has been able to stymie that and make a run by, on, by themselves. Norton for three. No, and the rebound for Tyler Williams. Carter has that pass intercepted. Here comes Norton. He's got Ellingson trailing if he wants him for three. Big shot right there for Ellingson and Drake. Back to a six-point game. And how many times have we seen, Justin, the trailer in transition without the communication able to step right in and knock in a big shot? These teams playing for the championship. Pinheiro, and it's going to be a blocking foul called against McGlynn. Both teams need a timeout right now. They're going to get one. Both, both teams just going back to back. Senior leadership right there, knocking in the six made field goals. Unselfish, intelligent, makes it fun to watch basketball that way. Well, this is one and one right now for Isaiah Pinheiro looking for his first points of the second half. He had 10 in the first half. And he knocks down the free throw. He's now three of four at the line. He had 30, a career high, last night in the win over Washington State. And he calmly knocks them both down. 75-67, San Diego leading. Representing the WCC. A conference that could surprise a lot of people this year. McGlynn. Waiting for the handoff. Ellingson. Norton's been off on the night. Norton now hangs, takes the bump, and puts it in. Norton is now 3 of 10 from the floor. And at this point, Drake can ill afford any empty trips down the floor. San Diego comfortable running some clock, running their offense. Carter with seven on the shot clock. Good defense there by Norton. Four on the shot clock. Pinheiro puts it up. No, that's an air ball and a shot clock violation. Good defense right there by Drake. Great defense and a little hesitation, I thought, by San Diego. Carter kind of held the ball a little too long, gave it up to Pinheiro. Really didn't have an opportunity to get off a good shot, but credit the defense of Drake of keeping everybody in front. Let's see if they can capitalize on the offensive end. Norton uses the screen. Murphy, top of the key. Has it poked away on the floor. Turnover. Costly turnover right there for Tramel Murphy and Drake. Right after they got the shot clock violation, you don't capitalize. And now the San Diego team will be happy to take 25, 30 seconds off again. Here's Williams for three. No. Floresca is going to be called for the foul, and that is going to be one-on-one. Fourth foul against Alex Floresca. And now one-on-one one for Nick McGlynn. McGlynn missed his last two free throws. He's one of three at the line. He's got 16 points, seven rebounds on the night. Critical free throws here. And he misses the front end, but it's kept alive by Ellingson. Murphy, extra pass. Ellingson for three. Hits it. Three-point game, 145 to go. On your shooter, Ellingson in the corner. But again, the lack of box out, boxing out by San Diego gives the Bulldogs another opportunity. They made him pay. 22 points for Ellingson. He has picked up the scoring slack in this one. Carter, his jumper, got it. He's feeling it. He's got 17. Norton to Murphy. He had the trailer, McGlynn. Wilkins in the paint. Murphy doesn't usually shoot the three. 
but he'll make it this time. Tramel Murphy, now he is 6 of 16 from three-point land on the season, and a timeout taken by San Diego. Two-point game, one minute to go. And this is with a championship on the line. Drake executes and loves to play with one another. Okay, when you do that now collectively as a group, you study together, you play together, you build each other's confidence. Now that process, I think, accelerates a little bit more in regards to developing the continuity that we're seeing. Carter's had the hot hand for San Diego. Here he is with the ball. Pinero posting up. Shot clock at eight. Pinero rises, fires, and hits. Four-point lead for San Diego, 42 seconds, and this is going to have to reset the clock because Norton never actually touched the ball, so you should not actually have the clock start until he touches the ball. It should be at 42 seconds. Yeah, and I know Trevell Murphy is kind of frustrated that, at that shot, but that's the shot you want to be able to take. Okay, you give him a little bit of space. You're there to contest. You don't want him to drive by you. That was just a good offensive play that time. And what this also does now is this is going to force Drake to actually touch the ball earlier and take those couple of seconds off the clock because San Diego realized what they were doing. Crossover by Norton. Kick back. Murphy. McGlynn. His pump fake to the hoop. Gets the bump and puts it in. 79-77. Timeout taken here by Drake. They've got two timeouts remaining. 29.7. And I like this timeout here taken by being they may anticipate that we may foul. So let's see offensive and defensively what happens here. Tyler Williams to inbound. He can run the baseline. And a foul is going to be called here against Norton. And that will send Olin Carter to the free throw line. A 79% free throw shooter. And this is one and one because it is the eighth team foul. The officials okay. are just checking things over right now. But Carter on the night, 17 points. These are his first free throw attempts. The, the savviness right here. See this foul? You can't really see it here, but Carter gets his arms up underneath Norton, mm -hmm. and he initiates the contact, and the official from behind really couldn't see. All he saw was Norton's arm on Carter. That's a smart, heady play by a veteran player. That's how you get yourself to a free throw line. You know what I mean? I used to do it all the time. I'm telling you. Oh, you're saying you're a smart, heady player? Uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you picked that up, huh? I was set that whole thing up to say that. But excellent play that time by Carter. I thought I was the point guard. Jeez. Well, you are. You know. Carter knocks them both down. And again, you don't need a three. If you can get a quick two by pushing it up and then being able to set your defense and force San Diego have to make a play from out of bounds. Norton will take the three and make the three. <laughs> Jimmy, shut up. <laughs> and now the timeout again by Drake. A one-point game with 23.6. And what this does is it changes. But that's the same thing with Jamel Murphy. Yep. Didn't think about it, stepped right into it. And that time Norton saw he had the opportunity. And that's when he just allowed you second nature to take over. Now the baseball pass. You can see it coming. Pinheiro puts it in. For some reason, McGlynn was playing in front as opposed to behind him, and the clock is starting again. Norton, he's going to kick it back. Murphy for three, trying to get the foul. This is out of bounds, and it's going to stay Drake Ball. I don't know why the clock started unless it actually touched Norton, and that's what Darren DeVries is saying right now. The clock started before. By rule, they can't go back and change the clock starting, but it's going to be Drake Ball with 8.3 seconds to go here. And they're down by three. They've had time to set up a play. Ellingson's been a three-point shooter. Wilkins can shoot the three. Five seconds to go. Here's Ellingson for the tie. Got it! With 1.9! And a timeout was taken before the inbound by San Diego. Oh! 
Oh, what a championship game here in Vegas. You know, and, and the question is, why don't you foul and not let it off? To have a now new career high, there's 1.9 seconds left. Inbounding is Tyler Williams. Williams to Floresca, Carter, the heave, that's off the mark, and we're going to overtime here in the championship game. 83-83, all because of the chaos that ensues. It'll be Pinheiro jumping center against McGlynn. Justin Kutcher alongside Jim Jackson here for the championship game of this Continental Tire Las Vegas Classic. Don't forget, we have another game coming up after this as a tip is controlled by Drake. The last time Drake led was 21-19 in the first half. Let's see if Drake can keep this momentum and strike first here in overtime. Here's McGlynn going to the jump hook. He does. So there is their first lead since it was 21-19. And McGlynn recognized that he had Tyler Williams, a smaller opponent on him, and finessed his way right inside for an easy two. Carter trying to answer back. He can't. McGlynn gets the rebound. McGlynn not taking a three this time. Wise decision. Murphy. Wilkins going left. McGlynn will take a three this time off the back of the rim. Rebound to Wilkins, a fresh 30. Wilkins wants to get the ball to the senior. And now it's Drake running the weave. Norton, eight on the shot clock. Norton going baseline, puts up the reverse. The one-handed reverse. It's a 7-0 run by Drake to lead by four. In the corner, Carter. He gets it back for three. And the ball is out of bounds. It will be San Diego ball. You know, we go back to this Nick Norton drop. Look at him side cut right there, but then he maintains his dribble. No help is coming. And then, like my old teammate Steve Nash, able to finish on the opposite side off the wrong foot. Steve Nash is the one who made that play famous. He did. But what Steve did and what Nick does extremely well is they maintain their dribble. They probe, they probe, and then they're able to make some sound decisions. San Diego gets the ball back. The backdoor cut by Wright. He got it, and the foul. Isaiah Wright now has 22 on the night. How many times have we talked about overplaying defense and then the backdoor cut? This time Isaiah Wright just backdoor. McGlenn a little late to the party to help. Floresca with the nice pass. He makes the free throw, 23. He's 5 of 5 at the line. It's a one-point game here in overtime. That was the third foul against McGlynn. McGlynn in the high post. Tremel Murphy trying to get to that spin move. He got there. And he goes at Pinheiro, and Pinheiro picks up the foul. And that will be number four against Pinheiro. Yeah, and Murphy just, I mean, right there, it, it was kind of tough for Pinheiro because Murphy initiated a lot of that contact, okay? And as soon as Pinheiro went to push back a little bit, that's when the foul was called, so... Give Murphy a lot of cr credit for putting pressure on the defense. He's one of three at the line. One of four at the line. As a team, nine of 16 at the free throw line are the Bulldogs of Drake. Misses them both. A chance for San Diego to retake the lead. 
Free throws are a difference maker, and San Diego has a big advantage. Right against Wilkins, right to the hoop, comes up short, McGlynn gets the rebound. Good defense by Wilkins, forcing a difficult shot. And an offensive foul against McGlynn, he had position, Norton didn't get it to him. When he was trying to reestablish position, he gets his fourth foul. Well, let's take a look, deep post position right here. McGlynn is asking for the ball and right there with the push off. Easy call for the baseline official, even the side official there to call it. So now four fouls for McGlynn coming up on two minutes to go here in overtime. Pinheiro. Now he goes to the spin move, and now he gets it blocked, but the foul, this might be number five on McGlynn. That is against McGlynn, and it is his fifth. And I was just about to say, McGlynn picked up two quick fouls. What I would do is go right at him in the middle to force him to have to make a decision, and that time he chose to try to block the shot up in the air. And if it was a slight body contact, which didn't seem like it was much, it was enough for the official to call the foul. It's unfortunate that, you know, he picks up his fifth foul. But smart play by Pinier right there. See that little hesitation? Now, I do believe that McGlynn was straight up in the air. Mm -hmm. And that Pinier initiated the, contract, the contact. So, to, to McGlynn's defense, you did the right thing by going straight up. So Pinheiro at the line is 4 of 5, now 5 of 6, 17 points. Ties the game up at 87. McGlynn, who is a huge part of this offense for Drake, is now out. One of two at the line is Pinheiro. Norton for three. Catch and shoot. And he knocks down another big one. 15 now for Nick Norton. The transfer from UAB. Carter trying to get it from Floresca. It's Williams. Williams has it blocked by Liam Robbins with 11 on the shot clock. Guess what? Nick Norton again. It's a little bit of space late and soft closeout by Isaiah Wright. And again, not even thinking about it. He got his feet set and he, he knew he had space. He just let it go. 11 on the shot clock here. Wright gets it. Wright to the hoop. And he's able to put in the scoop shot to make it a one point game. It's 25 now for Isaiah Wright. A timeout taken here by Drake with 1.17 to go in overtime of the championship game. These teams. You know, you're not going to be splashed across the national headlines, but it just reiterates the point that these coaches are talking about, that the process takes time, but if we do it the right way, we give ourselves a chance to win. And this is something that you can point back to and say this was a stepping stone for our program. Wilkins to Murphy. Picked up by Pinheiro. Shot clock at 10. One minute to play. Wilkins hanging. Shot clock now at three. And they do not get anything. So a chance for San Diego to take the lead again. They have not had the lead here in overtime. Carter, a little hesitation. His step back jumper is good. 21 for Olin Carter the third. And it's a one point lead for the Toreros. Norton gets fouled by Wright. Double bonus, two shots here for Norton. Well, you got a backcourt with Carter and Wright. You just put the ball in their hands and trust they'll make the right play. And Carter wanted to get to that step back. He was able to use that shoulder. Smart play. He didn't push off with that inside arm. 
The free throw is good for Norton. An 89% free throw shooter. Calmly knocks them both down. Drake is back on top by one. San Diego wants to talk about their strategy here. Down by one with 27.5. I'm going to tee you up. Being the player, what would you want drawn up with 27.5? It doesn't leave a lot of time for Drake to, to be able to get the ball down the court. We just got word that there's one second different shot clock to game oh. clock. Even though it's .5, that's what they're telling us. Here is Carter, his pull-up jumper. And San Diego is back on top by one, 18.5. Does Drake call a timeout, or do they just go? Huh? Norton, hesitation to the hoop. No whistle. Out of bounds. Who's it off of? They're saying it's going to be Drake ball with 9.4. And I believe they're going to go to the monitor to make sure who it's off of. Which gives Drake... Real thrust didn't work. Now they have another opportunity. And notice they've taken Liam Robbins out. And they put in Anthony Murphy as an extra offensive player. You know they want to get either Nick Norton or Ellington the ball. And because of that out-of-bounds play, that wasn't actually a timeout that... Darren DeVries needed to use because they had to go to them. But if you're a guy like Tramel Murphy, not a good free throw shooter, he likes to go to the hoop, but he doesn't like to go to the free throw line. It's a dilemma, but that's why you want the ball in the hand of Ellington or Norton to be able to make a play like right here. Well, Norton gets bumped, no whistle. Murphy puts it ball back up, and that's Anthony Murphy who gets fouled with 5.2. And they are in shock that there is no whistle for Nick Norton. So instead, it's going to be Anthony Murphy at the free throw line. Well, excellent play once again. And Squirrel that time jumped too soon to the outside and gave up the inside pass. Anthony Murphy, a nearly 71% free throw shooter on the season. And he hits the first. So he has a chance to give Drake the lead with 5.2 seconds remaining. No timeouts remaining for either team. That doesn't go. Here comes Wright. One second. Throws up a shot. Double overtime. We had double overtime a couple years ago between Wyoming and USC here at Orleans Arena. We Do they go small and try to bring the Murphy twins in at the same time? Well, the, the issue, too, is that it takes guys out of their natural position. With Robbins, it's certain sets that you run, that he's more comfortable playing, and that other players are comfortable in their position. So... You risk that when you go with a small lineup and put guys maybe at the four or five that aren't accustomed to playing that position. Carter gets open for three and hits it. 26 now for Olin Carter, the third. What a game here. And oh, yeah, by the way, there's another game coming up after this. <laughs> Norton tried going back door. Murphy in the paint. Puts it in. Just a strong move by Tramel Murphy. Yeah, great recognition knowing that he has smaller Carter on him. Instead of going to his patented spin move, he just went right over the top and finished it inside. Tramel Murphy's got 14 on the night. Wilkins, a very good defender, marked up against Wright. Here's Carter. Carter, his jumper. This guy is feeling it right now. 28 for Olin Carter. And he loves to get the ball in his left hand going left in order to get that little step back to clear some space. Norton for three. He hits it. Are you kidding me right now? 98 98. Oh, 
Carter. He's got the hot hand. Might as well stay with him. And look what they did. They switched Wilkins onto him. So Wright has it. Kick out. The three for Floresca. No. And the rebound comes out to Norton. Ellingson back to Norton. Pump fake in the paint. And a blocking foul because Floresca was inside the restricted area. And Norton will go to the free throw line for two. But what a heady play. You know, the, the pump fake because you knocked in if you're Norton to long jump shots. Now, once you get in there, Floresca is there, but he doesn't get out the side of the arc. And that was number five against Alex Floresca. So he has fouled out five points, three rebounds. So in to replace him is Yawan Masowski, squirrel with Norton going to the free throw line for two shots. And here in Vegas, I think people who took the over are very happy. <laughs> yes, they are. They're happy with the game, too. <laughs> Heck of a game, man. Two teams battling out again. You see the similarities in both teams. I mean, as it plays out, the things that they do kind of mirror each other. 22 points for Norton, who was so quiet for so long and has stepped up big when his team has needed it. Pinheiro's been locked up by Murphy. Trying to take him off the dribble. Keeps that pivot foot and uses the left hand. Very good defense that time by Murphy, but Pinheiro was not going to be stopped. Murphy looking for a back door, gets it back. Wilkins has it with 14 on the shot clock. Robbins setting the pick. Wilkins, seven on the shot clock. Norton has to put a shot up. He does off the glass, and he goes Michael Jordan on us. I don't know. I don't know how it went in. <laughs> Getting it done, man. 103, 125 for Nick Norton. They've switched it back now. Norton is on Carter. Carter for three in the tie. That's off. And the rebound comes into the hand of Ellingson, who quickly gets it into the hands of Wilkins. Coming up on one and a half to go here in the second overtime championship game here in Las Vegas. The weave being worked here by Drake. Shot clock at seven. Norton for three again. Front rims it. And Squirrel gets the rebound. San Diego pushing it back. Pinheiro on the baseline. He draws a foul. Let's see who it's on. It's going to be called against Tramel Murphy, and that will be number four against Murphy. Justin, I often say you cover golf, right? So I do. When you make that nice birdie putt, it might roll around a little bit, but it goes in. It doesn't matter how you got it. You got a birdie. <laughs> right there, off the backboard, three. It doesn't matter. It's three points. You know, and when you're rolling, you're rolling. He gave us a shrug like... I'm just that good. <laughs> I, I, I can't explain it. I can't, I'm just good. And a miss at the line by Pinheiro, the senior leader, who's got 19. He's now 5 of 8 at the line tonight, usually an 82% free throw shooter. And he just makes that one to make it a two-point game as we approach one minute to play. I'll say in double overtime, because who knows? We might be going to a triple. Norton is guarded by Isaiah Wright. Murphy sets the screen. Norton drives baseline, and he gets fouled. He got a knee to the thigh. One of those dead legs. But he's so crafty on the baseline. The 
anticipate. Did he call it on? They called it on Pinheiro, which would be his fifth, and he's in shock. No, they got the chain cut. Because it, it should be on Masalski. The officials are going to get together. The officials are going to are going to get together to see who this foul is going to be on. Yeah. It should be yeah. on Masalski. Masalski. I don't even think Pinheiro was even in the play. Well, he was right behind him. But I thought, I thought just like you, that the foul was called against Masalski. So here's Pinheiro on the trailer. And the foul is on the knee. Yeah, Pinheiro was in front of him. Right. Right there off the drive, right there. And here comes Masalski with the knee. That marks him off. One of the assistant coaches for San Diego is peeking into the monitor. Now, are they calling? Well, the foul was right there. They have changed it now to Masolski, and that's a good job by the officials yep. getting this right because I if the hero fouls out, I mean, that is monstrous. For Masolski, that is his fourth foul. But it sends the free throw shooter, Nick Norton, to the line, who's four of four on the night, an 89% free throw shooter. And for the first time at the line, he actually looks shaky. McGlynn has fouled out. All he can do is watch. Hits them both. 105, 101. A career high for Nick Norton. 27 points. Coming back off in the corner. Right. Gets into the paint. Doesn't hit it. Wilkins. Wait a minute. We've got a foul on the floor. The foul is going to be called against Anthony Murphy. That's his third. Wait, wait, keep your eye on Murphy right here. He's in great position, but then it's the clear out right here. Pushing back, pushing back right there. And the officials call it almost like a, almost a wrap around, but he didn't clinch, but he's pushing and rooting Masalski out of the paint. Masalski, a 36% free throw shooter. That looked like a 36% yeah. free throw you shooter. how much arc he had on. I mean, he shoots the thing straight in the air. We don't want rain here in Vegas. Now 8 for 23 at the line. 8 for 24, but the rebound is chased down by Pinheiro. Pinheiro in the corner for three. That's an air ball. Ellingson gets the rebound. They have to foul, and there is the foul against Anthony Murphy, who hit the free throw to tie the game at the end of the first overtime, but missed the second. That would have given Drake the lead. If, if Drake is to hold off and win this game, remember we talked about the experience and putting the team together, but yet and still, at the end of this game, it's been Drake who's been better executing, especially in this double overtime, than the more experienced San Diego team. And take it one step further. Every player on the floor right now for Drake was not a member of the Bulldogs last year. One of two at the line for Anthony Murphy. Five-point lead, 19 seconds. What you don't want to do if you're Drake is foul. Carter. Okay, so I guess I don't have an IFB at all the players. <laughs> no. And you know, you, because you don't want to give up a layup, I, I get it. But giving up the layup and just being in the position is okay. Stopping the clock Stopping and giving the up clock points is not because you, you, not only that, you get a chance now they can set their defense. Mm -hmm. Okay, before if they make you take it out quick, get the ball inbounds to get fouled, you walk to the other end. Now you have the challenge of getting the ball in against the set defense, which is a little bit more challenging. It's a season high for Carter with 29, now 30. In a substitution, Masalski goes out. Finn Sullivan comes in with 12.2, three-point game. You get a steal here. 
You get a three, tie game. Look who's inbounding it. It's Tremel Murphy, not a good free throw shooter. They want the ball in Norton's hands. They get it in his hands, and the foul is committed by Wright. So Norton will head back to the free throw line where he's 6 of 6, already has a career high in 27 points, and he's done his best Michael Jordan by saying, I don't know when he banked in a three. Drake is off their best start since the 07-08 season. 9 and 2 to open up this season in the first year under Darren DeVries. And Norton knocks down another one. And that's big for many, many reasons. Hits them both. Again, you cannot foul if you're Drake. Carter kicks it back out. Pinheiro, his three. No, the rebound by Norton with 1.3. He gets fouled, and Drake is going to win this Continental Tire Las Vegas Classic in double overtime. Unbelievable effort by the Bulldogs. Well, they stayed with it. You know, they made runs but really couldn't get over the hump, and then it was late that second half. But they finally kind of cracked the cold a little bit, put themselves in a position for Ellington to hit, Ellington to hit that three-pointer in overtime, hung with it. But in the second overtime, even without McGlynn in the lineups, you see another free throw made by Norton. They stayed together, stayed the course, and defensively were able to lock in and take away what San Diego was doing well. The guy who was the first commit for Darren DeVries has iced the game for Drake, and they get the championship. 110-103, a career-high 31 for Nick Norton. And the Drake University Bulldogs out of Des Moines, Iowa, will win this Continental Tire.